Hi Australia, how are you doing so far? There were a lot of amazing presentations today and I hope this one is one of them too. So <laughs> it's, it's my first talk ever at a conference and I'm pretty excited about it and somewhat nervous too, so <laughs> thanks for the support. I'm going to be talking about performance optimization in Ruby and how to do simple stuff that makes your app run faster. And, but before we go any further, I'd also like to inform you I'm new to Australia uh, and Melbourne. And before we go any further, I'd also like to talk about the Melbourne weather. <laughs> it was actually pretty chilly in the morning and now it's back to being hot. Um, which is actually, uh, the, the weather here actually changes faster than the code I've written. Just kidding, my code runs fast. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I added this slide because yesterday I learned that you could add emojis to presentations and I just wanted to give it a go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a computer science undergrad and I've helped uh, hundreds of Ruby apps fix performance bottlenecks in the code and uh, you might be familiar with Celluloid. It's one of the, it's one of my popular works and it's a concurrent Ruby framework and um, last summer I worked on Celluloid and managed to make it faster by about 300 percent which I think is, it's pretty good. Most of the tips <laughs> Thank you. Most of the tips I'm going to share are from my experience, from what I learned optimizing celluloid. So what exactly is performance optimization? Maybe you're one of the new venture funded unicorns and you consider performance optimization as spinning more dinos in Hiro Hiroku. <laughs> or is it much more than that? We'll look. So. Uh, Performance optimization, according to me, is doing more with less resources, which is somewhat counterintuitive to um, scaling. Don't get me wrong, there are times when you have to uh, throw in more servers, but throwing more servers at your bloated slow code won't make the problem go away. You'll eventually have to improve the performance. So um, how exactly do you optimize? Here are six tips that you could try to make your app run faster. Tip number one, it's pretty basic. Always have a benchmarking suite. So when you develop a program, usually one of the last steps is to make it as fast as possible. I've seen tons of apps without benchmarking suite where uh, the dev makes a little change in the code and for some reason it momentarily runs faster and he jumps from his chair, runs across the corridor over to his project manager and yells, I made the site fast. So um, without a benchmarking suite, you cannot actually uh, claim that. Uh, so benchmarking suite is absolutely necessary. Benchmark IPS is one of the amazing tools that I use pretty often. And it basically tells you how many times a function you can call, you can call a function per second. Um, I like to show you an example. So here, uh, how we use the benchmark IPS gem, and this piece of code right here calculates two number uh, calculates the number of times it can add two numbers per second. So, uh, but pretty much you could uh, write your own function between the blocks over there, and you could see how many times your function could run per second. Well, if you run something like this, you uh, you'll see something similar to this in the terminal. Um, this actually means that I can add one and two 12.5 million times per second, which uh, is pretty fast, but we could, uh, but we could go faster in uh, with tip number three, I guess. So uh, having a benchmarking suite is pretty critical to analyze the, uh, analyze the performance of your code actually. So this is one of the benchmarks I wrote to figure out why celluloid was slow. If you can read um, from the back, uh, 
it creates two pools of different sizes and it throws work at them and runs your work in parallel depending on the pool size. So if you have a larger pool, sometimes it used to work uh, faster, but sometimes it didn't. So I basically fixed that in the newer releases. Moving on to tip two, upgrade your Ruby. <laughs> I met someone yesterday and we were talking about performance and suddenly I found out they were still using Ruby. Could you guess? 1.8. Why? Because <laughs> the developers were too busy writing new features that they never got the time to upgrade their deprecated methods. Yeah, well, that sounds fair enough, right? Well, for those running 1.8, please upgrade to 1.9. I can bet you a gelato to, <laughs> to, to my non-gelato buddies that uh, you'll be blown away. It's, it has a completely new implementation of VM called YARV. It stands for yet another Ruby VM. And if you're brave enough, try Ruby 2.0. It has a feature called copy on write, which is an optimization technique uh, that, sh uh, that lets you share the same child and parent process until the child actually tries to modify something in memory. So that's the point when the memory is actually copied to the, uh, it has a, a, another copy generated. So with Ruby, to, uh, garbage collection has been a problem for a while in, uh, with the previous versions of Ruby. With Ruby 2.1, we had generation um, garbage collector. And what generation garbage collector does is, is that it splits uh, the heap space into two scopes, young scope and the old scope. And um, the new objects are pushed into the young scope and they live there for a specific number of memory scans and the objects which survive a, a specific number of memory scans are then moved to the older scope and uh, this actually this with each iteration we have a less heap of data to scan through so it tends to make ruby faster ruby 4 has some general um, speed improvements uh, for access to instance variable. Um, I saw the talk which Aaron gave. He's working on another uh, feature for garbage collector which actually optimizes the memory. I guess most of you have heard the talk. Moving ahead to tip three. Try another implementation of Ruby. <laughs> I'll be using the same code from earlier. Um, to run a benchmark on two different versions of Ruby, a short disclaimer, uh, your app may or may not run faster in other versions of Ruby. For example, JRuby is extremely fast with performing calculations than MRI, but it has a few shortcomings. Your uh, code will slow down with the JVM overhead. So you, you have to uh, uh, create a benchmarking suite and run it across different implementations of Ruby to figure out if that version of Ruby is faster for you. So um, here's a benchmark for Ruby 2.3 versus JRuby. So I think I told you that 12.4.5 million times is actually faster, as actually the fastest, but with JRuby, you could do twice the number of calculations in roughly the same amount of time. There's actually another interesting implementation of Ruby uh, which I've been following, it's under development, uh, which is called JRuby with Truffle and Graal. Um, I guess it's being developed by IBM and it is claimed to be 31% uh, faster than uh, Ruby 2.3. So I I'm following it uh, and I guess you should follow it as well. Moving on to tip four, profile your methods. You should always profile your methods. The this trick could actually help you uh, find the lowest hanging fruits uh, to make your app run fast. I'll be showing you a few tools later during the slides, so kindly hold on to this tip. Tip number five. You, uh, you would need to keep this in mind when generating your benchmarking suite. So figure out the bottleneck. So when you generate a benchmarking suite, you need to actually know why your code is running slow. You don't want to waste your time optimizing the functions rarely used, so you need to know which part of the program most, uh, most of the time is actually spent in. So is it the IO which is causing your code to run slow? 
or is uh, or are you performing too many CPU calculations or you're allocating too many objects? I'll be telling you about some of the tools uh, shortly. Moving on to take, uh, tip six, I guess um, this is the secret key to performance heaven. <laughs> you guess it, who guessed it? Who guessed it? It actually isn't. It's try multi-threading. <laughs> there was a really wonderful talk by Marcus yesterday about actors and celluloid. And uh, I thought it was pretty neat uh, what celluloid could do. And if you are not um, a fan of Elixir, I think you should give uh, celluloid a try. It uh, really improves the performance of your app. And uh, the particular implementation of Ruby that I would suggest you use with celluloid is uh, probably JRuby or Rubinius. Uh, both of them are pretty uh, much supported by celluloid. And um, yeah, that's about it. <sighs> Moving on, I, uh, some, here are some of the tools that I use. that make my life uh, pretty easy. First, of the, uh, first one of them is the method profiler. This is the easiest tool um, which you could use. It collects the performance information about the methods uh, in your objects and creates a report to help you show which methods take how much time and uh, you could actually uh, use this tool for the tip four I just mentioned before. Based on the stats, you could easily figure out uh, which part of your code is actually the bottleneck. So how do you use it? It's pretty simple. Attach it to the Bazinga class. Uh, you have to observe the Bazinga class and do some uh, stuff with the Bazinga class. And in the end, you have to just report the profiler. And if you run this code, this is what you get. I ran this with the celluloid code. And if you see at the top, uh, the the tasks, the tasks are being called twice the number of times as compared to the task function. Here we have about um, 32 milliseconds of a difference between the two functions, but uh, those uh, these are being called twice. So we could, uh, in some scenarios, we could, uh, if, if we optimize the task function, in some scenarios, we could uh, nudge the performance a little bit higher. Next tool would be kcache grind. This is a call graph viewer, a more advanced tool than the method profiler as it tells you the CPU time a function takes. Uh, you have to generate a running dump of the code and then this tool lets you see it in a GUI, which is actually pretty cool. Ah, it's not pretty cool, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was pre pretty cool. <laughs> so actually uh, you could uh, sort uh, the functions are taking the most uh, most amount of CPU and uh, go, go from there if you're profiling based on CPU. And if you look closely over to the um, call graph over there, you, you would see something like 4,000%. So um, if you're using MRI, um, you, won't, you won't see a number greater than 100%, but since we are multi-threading, this actually bumps the number up to a higher number. I, this, this is one of the celluloids um, dump that I got after, uh, after uh, before actually performing the optimization. Next is Ruby Prof. I, I'm sure uh, a lot of you have heard about it. And it's actually uh, one of the most use tools by me um, in celluloid. <laughs> Sorry. All you need to do is place the code you want to profile uh, right over there. And in the end, there's a graph printer. And what it, uh, the most beautiful part about this is that it, it divides your program um, individually by each thread. And then you can look up into each thread and see what exactly is slowing your code down. So uh, for example, here, the class timers wait is actually taking up 99.9% .9 of the CPU. So um, it is meant to do that, but uh, you could actually figure out from this where the code is actually running slow. 
next up is object space count objects so um, the the tools that i showed you before are for cpu optimization but this tool right here is for memory optimization it lets you um, it it actually lets you uh, see the number of objects that are being created of uh, be, be, uh, before and after you run a particular code so uh, if you if you simply print this out it would look something like this so you have the total number total number of objects being created total number of class being created dumped on the screen so you could uh, disable the garbage collection before running this and just dumping the data out and uh, run your code and after that dump this data to actually figure out the difference between uh, to actually see the spike in certain objects or certain types of uh, data types being generated so this could really help you in memory optimization next tool is dtrace so i was talking to aaron and constantine yesterday and they recommended this for real time cpu monitoring it isn't um, a new of a tool and i haven't used it although uh, they said that if you ever want to do C, uh, real time cpu monitoring this is a, this is a definitive tool so i i thought i like uh, you uh, you guys like to know about it and you might want to give it a try well that's it thank you very much for being at rubicon for australia and i hope you you're having a good time over here thanks prathmesh uh do we have a couple minutes for questions does anyone have any particular questions that's very convenient Uh, yeah, I just had a question about Rubinius, really. I've read a lot of um, conflicting reports as to whether Rubinius actually really does give the kind of speed increases um, that were promised, um, I, I think, when it was first released, and how you feel it compares to things like JRuby. Yeah, so uh, we actually, our focus uh, at Celluloid is to su uh, support and build directly with, JRub uh, with Rubinius. We're actually working directly with the Rubinius core team. one of their members is working at celluloid so we are trying to optimize both of them to run together and hopefully in a year you'll see the difference any others all right thanks thank you thanks again